Three billion years ago, when only the most basic microbial life existed on Earth, two black holes collided in the galaxy far, far away. Now, one black hole was around about 29 times the mass of our Sun, and one was around about 19 times the mass of our Sun. And when they collided, they created a black hole of a total mass of around about 49 times the mass of our Sun. Now, around about two solar masses was converted into pure energy, launching a tsunami of gravitational waves into the cosmos. Finally, after traveling three billion light years through the cosmos, these gravitational waves have washed up on Earth's shores, and physicists were waiting. Hi, I'm Ian O'Neill, and welcome to Astro Engine. Now, by now, you've probably heard about the third detection of gravitational waves made by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO. Now, the first famous detection of gravitational waves came in September 2015, after LIGO underwent upgrades for sensitivity. And then, as if to prove that wasn't a fluke, physicists announced the discovery of a second detection in the following December. But now we're at detection three, so we can officially say this isn't just luck. We're actually getting very good at detecting these black hole collisions in the dark, billions of light years away. But do you want to hear what a black hole collision actually sounds like? Take a listen. After converting the gravitational wave signal into sound that we can hear, it actually sounds like colliding and merging black holes make a chirping noise. Now this happens when the black holes circle closer and closer and closer in their orbits, gradually increasing their gravitational wave frequency. Now it can be hard to imagine what gravitational waves actually are, as it's kind of an abstract concept, but they are literally ripples in space-time. Now, if you imagine a pond, and imagine dropping a pebble in that pond, and the ripples travelling away from the impact point, you can kind of get an idea as to what these are. So basically, the pebble dropping into the pond is the black holes colliding, and the ripples propagating away in those rings are basically the gravitational waves travelling through the cosmos. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that because we're converting the surface of a pond into four-dimensional space, but, you know, that's a pretty good way of describing it. But the problem with gravitational waves is, although Einstein predicted their existence over 100 years ago, they don't actually produce any light. So we can't actually detect them using classical astronomy techniques, which relies on the electromagnetic spectrum to actually see distant stars. Now, although gravitational waves don't produce any light, they do have an effect on local space-time, as in they travel through local space. They travel through Earth, they travel through me, they travel through you, they travel through everything. And theory predicts they're happening all the time. Varying frequencies, high frequency, low frequency, anything with a huge mass will cause these gravitational waves to propagate through our universe. From colliding black holes to spinning neutron stars, even the Big Bang produces its own gravitational wave signal, although those are very, very low frequency signals. Now LIGO has actually been in operation since 2002, but it's only recently that it's been upgraded enough so it can detect these very, very faint ripples in space-time. Now, physicists use LIGO as kind of a high-tech laser tripwire. So basically, when a gravitational wave secretly travels through us, it triggers a response. LIGO is based on laser interferometry, which is a really cool technique for detecting gravitational waves. Basically, there are two stations, one located up in Washington State and one down in Louisiana, separated by about 2,000 miles. But the black holes that cause these signals aren't any old black holes. These are black holes we didn't even know existed until LIGO detected them. Now, black holes come in all sizes, from the stellar mass black holes after a supernova explosion, all the way to the supermassive monsters that live in the centre of our galaxies. But there's some confusion as to how black holes get so big so quickly. So by detecting these black hole mergers, we may be getting a glimpse into how black holes grow and how often they collide in our universe. Now, by measuring the fingerprint of this gravitational wave signal at the moment of these black holes colliding, physicists have made a kind of a cool discovery. What they found was that both black holes were spinning out of alignment with one another, so they weren't spinning in the same orbital plane when they made contact to create the larger black hole. And what physicists think this means is that both these black holes came from different parts of a very dense stellar cluster and eventually found each other after orbiting each other for a few billion years to eventually make contact to create this gravitational wave signal. As this signal's travelled so far, it's travelled three billion light years, which is twice as far as the other signals, 
physicists were on the lookout for an effect called dispersion on the waves. Now, dispersion is the physical effect on light as it travels through a prism to create a rainbow. As the different frequencies of light travel through the prism at different speeds, they get spread out, and that's why we get a rainbow effect. But in the case of gravitational waves, Einstein predicts that there should be no dispersion effects on gravitational waves. There are some competing theories that suggest there might be dispersion in gravitational waves, but on analysing this particular signal, there was absolutely no evidence of dispersion. Yep. Another triumph for this guy. If you want to find out more about this incredible discovery and some of the science behind gravitational waves and general relativity, check out my latest article on HowStuffWorks.com, I'll link it down below. And also come back to AstroEngine.com for more updates. Now I want to make this channel as much about your curiosity as my curiosity. So if you have any questions about astrophysics or just have a cool idea for a video, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to read them. Also, be sure to subscribe, and if you want to get in contact anytime, you can find me on Twitter, at AstroEngine. Hope to see you again next time.